Ladies, gentlemen, no variations there upon. I'm wearing a fest today because we're going back through time again. This time to ancient Egypt. Now, I have done an ancient Egypt dress before when I was doing a series of historical dresses that can be done with one piece of fabric and no sewing. And yes, this is one of them. Let's take off my fez and I'll show you the basics of it again, although the video will be linked in the corner. So, basically, grab yourself two metres of linen fabric or cotton if you can't get linen but uh, if you want historically accurate you probably want a linen raise it up above your head drape it over your shoulders pull this up you want it over your bust it can be done below the bust but if you do it below the bust then you've got less of the uh, sleeve material so you want it above the bust so you what you do is pin this there and then pin these two flaps over the side and you've got a dress. The Egyptians probably would have just worn it like this and not cared that it would uh, flap open at the front and reveal everything because they did have dresses that were basically just entirely fishnet that you could just see through. They had a very different uh, attitude towards nudity than we do. Now I don't want that to happen primarily because this is going to be a costume dress, something that's going to be worn on YouTube videos, so uh, I don't really want to get demonetized by flashing everything or showing anachronistic underpants. So my way around that is going to be, rather than just pinning at the top, what I'm going to do is put in some clasps or some hook and eyes, I think I'll go hook and eyes, down the front side to keep everything together and I'm also going to trim the edge with some blue bodice tape and that's going to be basically it's going to be a quick easy project so the first step in creating all this is going to be to put in some tailor's tack so I know exactly where to put the hook and eyes so uh, let me grab some thread right so I've got myself a thread and this is a thread in a contrasting colour to the material so what I want is a length of thread decent size length I need to thread this through a needle I'll call it the big eye because I have knackered eyes. Then we put it through so that the needle sits halfway on the thread so we've got two tails to this thread. And the way we do a tailor's tack is we take that uh, double ended thread that we just had, place it through the material so it goes through both sides, then pull it so that we have a tail on this side and then the loose needle on this side and then we cut in two places. Firstly we cut the needle end to release the needle and then we cut in between the two pieces of fabric so now we end up with a piece of fabric with a brightly coloured piece of thread sticking out of both sides and because I put the thread through the fabric while I had it in the position where I wanted it where the thread is in both sides of the fabric is where I should sew on the hook and eyes so it's a non-permanent marker on there so you could use chalk, chalk rubs off it's, a, it's more accurate because you know you've already held it together in that position you know that if you sew the hook on where this thread is and the eye on where this thread is they will meet up and link together in the position that you want them. Now I'm going to do that another three times you want at least two hook and eyes in order to make it sit straight but I'm going to put three on there just because I don't want it gaping open in the middle. So that was the top one that's going to go about bust level we're going to have another one that goes part way down and the lower one is going to be about sort of mini skirt length because anything above that is what I want to keep together. Anything below that, it doesn't matter too much if it opens a little bit because it's only going to show some of my leg. So I decided to go with snap closures rather than hook and eye just because they're going to be more secure and I forgot I had them. So I'm just going to sew those in place by finding the appropriately matched uh, tailor's tacks and if you get confused as to which tailor's tacks you'll supposed to be pairing up when you've got multiple of them like I have what you can do is use different coloured thread and then you can match up the colours of thread mine are far enough spaced apart that I can pretty much keep track of them so all that's left now is to sew those on and then do the uh, finish around the side the only thing I will mention is that in tacking these together I've done it so that one side overlaps the other quite considerably and the reason I've done that is Firstly, it does ensure that things stay hidden. And secondly, it saves on the bias tape because only one side is going to be visible. So I can put the bias tape only on the outside layer. The inside layer can stay 
raw because it is just a costume and it's only supposed to be viewed by my camera at one time. It's not like it might be wearing it out and there's a chance that people could see the inside of the garment or anything. So yeah, I'm just going to uh, cheat and save myself a bit of money and effort. But there's not much really left in the tutorial now. I mean, I've already done the uh, main part of actually assembling the garment. The Egyptian garment was just pinned. I could go on about Egyptian history or something, but I'm not certain you'd be interested. So, how about instead, I tell you a story. So this story is an Egyptian story, and it begins at the dawn of history, right around the time when the gods were living on the earth with mortals. At this time, the most powerful country in the world, as it should be, was Egypt most powerful and happy and prosperous country and its pharaoh was the god Osiris. He ruled over a prosperous land and everyone loved him for it. He was the greatest ruler in all of the world. And his brother Set was a bit jealous of this. So in order to win some standing with the other gods, Set decided to throw a party and invite every major god and every minor god, and all the rulers of all the most powerful kingdoms in the world. And they all came, and they all had a great time. There was fine food, fine wine, lots of games. And Set had even brought presents for people. But one of these gifts, he said, was for someone who well, let's just say it was a surprise as to who it was for. Set had brought this big chest. Big chest of uh, camphor wood, I believe it was. Very expensive wood in the ancient world. And this camphor wood chest, it had a sort of an opening in the centre that was in the shape of a person. And he said that this chest is in the shape of the person that he belongs to. And if you sit in the chest, or lie in the chest, and it fits you perfectly, then it's your gift and you've won it. So one by one, all the gods and all the mortals decided to lie in this chest and see who fit the most perfectly. Now, most gods were too big or too small or had too many curves or were too bulky. No one seemed to fit until Osiris got in. And once he sat in, it was perfect, an exact outline of his body. And as soon as he got in there and everyone saw that he fit in perfectly, Set closed the lid and sealed Osiris inside the chest. The chest, as it turns out, was not a chest. It was a coffin, the first coffin. And after sealing it shut, he threw it into the Nile and the Nile carried it out to sea. And it washed up on some distant shore and the camphor wood grew into a camphor wood tree and all the gods were upset but also fearful Osiris had been taken from them and taken by another powerful god at that and Set, he lorded it over them and became the new pharaoh of Egypt he was an okay pharaoh but he was no Osiris and everyone longed for the day when Osiris would return, and none more so than Osiris' sister and wife, because this was ancient Egypt, uh, Isis, not the group Isis, the goddess Isis, the goddess of the Nile. She never gave up hope that she would one day find Osiris, and she toured the whole world looking for where the coffin had washed up. She didn't find it, but that tree that had grown from the coffin, a king had found it and thought it was a magnificent tree with magnificent wood. So he had it cut down and used as a column in his palace. Well, when Isis came along and heard about this king with the camphor wood column, she thought, I wonder if, by any chance, that is the camphor wood that holds Osiris. So she disguised herself as an old woman and went inside and introduced herself to the royal family and offered her services as a sort of nanny 
to the baby prince. And while Isis was in the palace, uh, checking all the columns to see if she could find Osiris, she became quite fond of the young prince and decided to make him immortal. But in order to make him immortal, she had to do a spell that required her to set fire to the baby. Yeah. So, she did just that. She bathed the baby in flames. And when the mother saw what was happening, she freaked out, obviously. She set the baby on fire. So Isis was forced to transform back into her divine form and reveal herself. And when she revealed herself, then, obviously, misunderstandings were solved because this is in a sitcom where a slight misunderstanding, you know, can be resolved by just, like, talking to each other and... Yeah, it goes on and on and on. No, in this instance, she just said, you know, I'm the goddess, I was trying to make him immortal. End of story. But having revealed herself, it did give her the chance to properly check the columns, and inside one of the columns, she did find Osiris, and she demanded that Osiris be returned to her. Of course, the king agreed. So she took Osiris back to Egypt, and she planned to resurrect him, because in all his time in the coffin, Osiris had actually... Well, not died, but become separated from his soul. Because God can't really die, can they? So Isis had to create a spell that would bring the soul back, perform a ritual. And while she went off to prepare this ritual, she hid the body, but it was found by Set. And Set didn't want Osiris revived at all. So he cut Osiris up into tiny pieces and cast the parts of his body all over the lands of Egypt. And when Isis came back, she was distraught, obviously, having found what had happened, losing her husband for a second time. Well, as upset as she was, she wasn't uh, deterred from a quest to revive her husband, husband brother. So she went on a quest and gathered up all the different parts of Osiris' body sailing up and down the Nile in a papyrus ship. And after she gathered all the pieces, she put him back together and began to perform the spell. But a piece was missing. You see, Osiris' male member had been eaten by a fish. I know, you must have thought it was a worm or something. So, being incomplete, when Osiris' body and soul were reunited, he could no longer stay within the land of the living. He had one day, or rather he had one night, and then he had to go to the land of the dead. Well, it wasn't too much of a bad thing for Osiris to go to the land of the dead. He did get to be ruler over all the dead. Which is why in the Egyptian view, the afterlife is a great place because that's where Osiris rules and he's a good king. So what did Isis and Osiris do on their last night together? Well, what married couples do, although how they did it, I don't know, as Osiris was missing a quite significant part of himself. But they did, and Isis became pregnant. And after some time, she gave birth to a son, a powerful son, who was the sun, and the moon, and the heavens. It was Horus, the hawk-headed god. And Horus, with his eyes shining brightly, cast light over all of the world, which presumably, until this point, would have been in darkness. And Set, seeing what has happened, challenged Horus to a fight, and they did battle, a battle that seemed to last for eternity, a battle that sometimes Set seemed to be winning and sometimes Horus seemed to be winning. None could come out on top, and at one point Horus had one of his eyes severely injured and he stopped shining so brightly, which is why the moon doesn't shine as brightly as the sun, they are both Horus' eyes. But anyway, after this titanic struggle had reached its conclusion, it became evident to everyone that Horus was the victor, and Horus took his place on his father's throne as a true ruler of Egypt. And he didn't stay there forever, though he ruled for a very long time, but eventually 
Horus's reign ended and it got passed to the pharaohs, the mortal pharaohs. That's why all the kings of Egypt claim to be living gods, because they're all supposed to be taking the place of Horus, who was taking the place of Osiris, and when they die they go into the afterlife, just like Osiris, and rule there. And that is the origin of Egyptian kingship. And why the moon doesn't shine as brightly as the sun. Nice little fable, isn't it? So that's the general shape of it. You can see, because I've pinged it up high enough, I can move my arms up and down, and I've got freedom to move. And because I've got the uh, press studs in there, you can't really, when it opens, it doesn't open any higher than sort of my thigh sort of height. So not going to be flashing anything. Next thing to do is to trim the edges in the bias tape. So I'm going to do that around the sides there, around the collar, and just this front section because the other section you won't be able to see because it's hidden under there. But if I uh, just put the bias tape down that one side, it'll give a nice little trim down the front. And there we have it. This is the Egyptian dress. I've put a little uh, blue trim on the side. And don't worry about all these uh, pins in the centre here. They will be going away because when it's actually used on film, there's going to be a prop there that's going to hold everything together. But that's a big project and something that's got to be built separately. But as you can see, having all the press studs on the inside means I don't have to uh, put the border all the way down on the inside because you'll never see that part and it keeps it closed so I'm never going to uh, accidentally let slip and chew more than I need to but that's a quite nice little dress it's a shame that it's only going to be a prop because uh, it's actually something you could probably wear out but anyway there we have it nice Egyptian dress and a Egyptian story to boot so uh, if you want to see me do the no sew versions of this dress and some uh, Greek ones then the video should be popping up at the side but if you've already seen that one then this video down here has been selected by the algorithm just for you and if you want to see more of these historical builds then uh, hit that subscribe button.